So what we're gonna do is we um, are actually my mission for today is that you're all gonna be a tea sommelier in 40 minutes. Are we gonna make that? Good. Because actually my background is from wines and beers and uh, liquor, spirits to combine that with food. And actually what I found out at the moment, uh, Robert showed me the first time what a tea can be or how good a tea can be. Then I realized this is a really good product and we don't do right with it. And actually this is one of the reasons why, because the terroir what you will find in tea is exactly the same as what you have in wine. And that's when, when a sommelier gets excited, because that means that you can just get a different tea from a different terroir, and you can play with the flavor and the textures. And the other one is that tea contains tannins, or polyphenols, what's originally in the tea. And if you have the, the tannins, as a sommelier, you use that together to, with food. And I'm gonna teach you how we're gonna do it, and you're gonna do it by yourself in the end of this presentation, actually. So, as I say, the tannins, you will find it in red wine. And uh, it gives a structure to it, but you can use it in a functional way as well, but that later on. Meet the sommelier. Now, here I am. Thank you. It's quite important, as Peter said, go to the chefs because they are the creative people and they will give you a lot of feedback what you can do with tea and how you can sell your tea in, with a different story and let, as a full total experience. What the sommelier does, he's the one between the guest and of course the company. He's the face and he can share you the flavor, the taste of all the products they have. But when I worked as a sommelier in a restaurant, I find out one, one problem. When people didn't drink any alcohol, I didn't have a story to tell them because I just gave them water or a Coke. And what we did with it, we just washed all the flavors away what the chef has made in the kitchen. So at the moment that I found out tea, how good that can be, um, that was the moment that a dish and tea, I think what you've experienced yourself today, especially with uh, Edwin Soon has shown us, that tea and wine or tea can be a really good alternative when you want, don't want to have alcohol. So what you guys are up to is go to the sommeliers and show them this, and I will give you one big instrument to do it. But first, I want to show you this uh, restaurant. This is restaurant Elsendown in the Netherlands, and actually this is the first restaurant who served a complete tea menu next to food. So that sounds really good, but at the moment I came there, I found out that yeah, the tea and everything was right, but there was one problem. They didn't know how to brew a tea. So fortunately, today you've all been learned how to brew a good cup of tea. So share the story and that bring all the possibilities with tea up in all the companies. Now we're getting with taste and flavor because I promise you to become a tea sommelier so we have to get, get hands on with it. You all will find a shot glass on top of your table, a small one. And actually, don't touch it yet. Actually, what we're gonna do is, this is an experiment, a small experiment. And we're gonna do it uh, in two steps. The first one is you shut your nose and you take a sip. And then you think, what is this? And what flavor do you taste and what do you feel in your mouth? Is it filming? How does it work? Actually everything, what Edwin Soon said to us. At the moment you finish this and you've got your conclusion for yourself, open your nose and get some oxygen with it and find what, what happens when you open your nose and when you breathe through your nose and what, what you get and what your experience is. So get all your shot glass, shut your nose, Take a sip, make a conclusion, and then open your nose and find out what happens. And then the guessing starts, what are you drinking? And it's alcohol-free actually, for the people who are curious.
Can you tell me? What's the experience with your nose shut or with your nose open? Creamy? Textures, yeah. And what happens when you open your, no your nose? Sweetness. And do you get any aroma? Vanilla? That the first, when you close your nose, or when you shut your nose and you take a sip, you only will have the sweetness, because that's what you feel here, and what you taste here. And at the moment you open your nose, then the aroma comes up. And the great thing is, when you drink tea, because it's a hot beverage, you get the aromas in your nose. And like Dewan said, that's the part what's interesting, because then you have the other 50% of the flavor and aroma, what the tea can offer you. So this is the first trick. So now you all know how to taste. We're gonna do a small tasting session later on. But first it's interesting to see what, what's the difference or what are the similarities between wine and tea. And if we see the tea first, because we're here to drinking tea, when we look at the tea, we see it's non-alcohol. It's made out of leaves. It's made of one type of plant, like the tea plant as you've seen, and we're serving it hot. Of course, it can be cold, but it's interesting to use it hot because of the contrast, what you can do with the temperature. And when we look at the wine, you see it's an alcohol, and instead of leaves, it's made out of the grapes. So that's the difference that the, when you have a wine, there's a lot of fruitiness and a lot of acidity in it, where the tea has a different kind of acidity. And the fun thing is, like uh, Betty Costa told us, when you have the acidity out of fruitiness, it will blow away all the flavor of a cheese or of a dish. And that's the reason why my opinion is that tea is a better match for cheese and for some other dishes as that wine is or that a port can be because you see all the natural sugars and all the fruitiness will just blow away all the subtle flavor was just nice to, uh, to find out. And especially now you all know how to catch the aroma, it's only better. Uh, what's another big difference is that you see that the grapes, the variety, that's much bigger. There are hundreds of grapes and the tea is just made out of one plant. But this is a story that people like sommeliers like to hear. Because they always say, or when I do a tasting with them, they, they ask me how many tea plants are there in the world? Because you've got strawberry tea and green tea, white tea, do they all have a different plant? And when you explain them that it's just one plan, then they get confused and they get interested and excited, actually. So it's a good story for you if you share the story about tea next to food, that this is one of the differences. But when you change terroir, you still have a lot of variety. And if you see like a green tea or a white tea, that that's a big difference as well. So first, how to use the tea next to food. As I said, you have the tannins in a tea, that's the same as in, as in uh, red wine. And as a sommelier, we use it next to really fat or actually a lot of protein dishes. So that can be a foie gras, what you have experienced today, but it can be a kebab. I don't know, did ever, anyone had the kebab yesterday with the peppermint? A few here. And you did as well? <laughs> because the nice thing what happened was because of the, the kebab, and the proteins in it that work really well together with the tannins. So that's what you can do as a sommelier and how you use a beverage functional next to a dish. And at the dish we're gonna serve you, you will find out how it works. And now you can taste tannins thanks to Admin Soon. You will find it out. Another interesting thing actually is the temperature of a dish, of, our, of the tea. Because when you have a temperature in your beverage, that means that the fat will melt of the, uh, of the dish. And the fat, like the kebab, there was a lot of fat in it, in the meat. And uh, that melts and that makes the filming thing. And that's the reason why cheese is another one as well. So this is a good point to realize if you speak with a sommelier about drinking tea next to food, talk about the tannins which you can find in wine and that the temperature can bring you a different experience of a dish. This is a sheet, what you already have seen in Edwin's, uh, Edwin's presentation, and that's about how does the sommelier work. First, what you do is you make a database of drinks, and there can be a wine cellar as it is in front, 
and you will have a variety of drinks where you can make some good combinations, but you will have a uh, complete spectrum of uh, drinks which you can use next to food. So it's good to find good quality drinks, keep them in your cellar so you will have a nice spectrum. But as you have found out in the last week, there are so many teas and you can never understand the whole world of tea. So we have to do it in a different way. And that comes up. The second thing is what we do is analyzing food. So you look at the components of the food. Is it fresh? Is it, um, what's the intensity of flavor? Is it fat? Does it have a lot of protein? So that you can make the combination with a good beverage. And that's actually the third point. Now it's becoming interesting, especially for Mr. Fernando, because we're gonna start talking about the Watte series. Does any one of you work to, with the Wattes? The Watte? Two, four, just four, five, six? Uh, we're coming up. I will uh, explain you why everyone has to work with the Watte. And I would like to invite all the people or, or the staff to bring up the first tea. Are they ready? Is the tea ready? Okay, then uh, we can do. I can. Uh, I will tell you a slightly thing uh, about the Watte series, because it's a cup of tea of really good quality, like it says at the, uh, the slide. It's an experience. Well, it works very well, and it's a simple line of tea, but with so good quality. And quality and simple goes really long, because simple doesn't simplicity doesn't mean that it's bad, but it's just good in a simple form. And what the Watte series is, is you've got one tea at four places grown, and the influence of the terroir at the uh, Watte at the tea, is they make it so different and so special, maybe you find out earlier, that the, an high grown tea, oh, that a high grown tea, like the Ran Watte, is grown on 6,000 feet uh, above sea level, that that's more elegant and delicate as that a low-grown tea is. And that's what we tasted earlier on this day. So what we're gonna do, I would like to invite the staff to bring up all the teas. And I would like to invite you to go to page 34, if I'm right. And here you can make some tasting notes. So what I would like to do, um, we're not gonna do it in a professional way, but I want to show you that you just can with a, in the most, e or most easiest way, you can, have a st you can make a, st a good combination by yourself when you use the Watte series. So what I would like to ask you is to use the Ran Watte, or to taste the Ran Watte, the Uda Watte, the Meda Watte, and the Yatta Watte, and that you, make, uh, that you just make a, a line uh, how good the intensity is. So if we say light intensity or uh, that is a light color or a dark color, just press a line or put a line at the whole line and do it with all the T's. So you see that the lines, how they work. And you can do the same with the, the taste intensity, the character, is it light, is it heavy or robust? And you can put some tasting notes on it of the aromas, what you can smell, because now you, you can catch them up. So I don't know if you have some music ready to have at the background of the tasting session. So we can start already first with uh, the color of the tea. Because as uh, Dylan says before, what we do when we, when we taste tea, we see, we smell, we take a sip and we swallow. And that's the steps what you always do. So you can do, a, do that with coffee, with tea, with wine. Because that's the way how you can find out what the structure, what the quality of the product is. So, first have a look what color it is, put a line, make your notes, and then start smelling. And the best way of smelling, actually, is to put your nose in your glass. So, take this side of the glass and put it on top of your nose, so then you, and then breathe in real deep, and then you get a lot of aroma. And the interesting thing is, there are already a few tables who have, has two teas now, but you guys will come up later. It's done, combine or 
take first the Uda water and the Ron water and take a sip and a or smell to it. And I already see one good thing here because someone is smelling it with his nose shut. And then find out what does it with the flavor of the tea because that's the importance of the aroma and that's what it makes a, a tea a real good quality product. So you will recognize that later on. And Robert, can you tell us what you, what you smell, what you taste? I get a, a hint of sweetness, but mainly uh, grassy notes, mm -hmm. uh, a hint of hay, uh, a very subtle, not very malty, Sorry. Uh, very delicate. Uh-huh. And a lot of smoothness. And that's it. Does everyone taste the difference between the different teas? What's really nice to see now while the, all the teas come together, you see the nice line from light to dark. And that's all because of the place where the tea is grown. And you can see a lot of it because it says how robust the flavor is as well. And if you have a really nice delicate tea, most of the time it's, it has a light color if it's produ produced properly. What's really important to do actually is to make the notes as well because you need them. That's the important thing when you're a sommelier, a wine sommelier, tea sommelier, a barista, or a, a cheese specialist like Betty Costa is. The important thing is all the things you taste and that you, what you smell and your experience, you have to write it down. So in, that you in a later stadium still can recognize what you have tasted so you can use it for other moments and that you can use it later on as well. So if you all want to make your notes, and may I ask the, if the stuff are all ready, then we can bring in the dish as well. Robert's gonna arrange it. Cool. What do you think, Volker? First, the smell, I smell hay, a little bit of leather and citrus. Yeah, and especially the citrus. Yes, and flavors, uh, for my personally, taste a little bit leathery. Uh -huh. And it tastes like hay as well. Like hay? Yes. And what if you compare different types of water together next to each other? So Uta water, I think I have, from, from my opinion, a bit more taste. More taste? Yes. It has a little bit more body. Yes. And the nice thing is, what, I, what you really will taste with this, uh, with the water session, is that even when it's a low grown, they always say a high grown tea, as a good quality. Well, what the Watte series shows us is that even if, when it's low grown, it can be really good quality as well. And the thing is, you, uh, you will have, I think everyone has the tea almost ready. When you see the low grown, you will, expl um, you will get all the tannins and the robust flavor. And some people, they say, I don't like this because it's too strong. What's the funny thing, if you have a dish, for instance, a pasta, with a cream sauce on top of it that, that contains a lot of fat and proteins in it. So then if you use the proteins and the fat of the cream sauce to get it to the tannins, and that's what we do with red wine as well. So that's why you get a roast pork, for instance, with a good strong red wine, especially the people from New Zealand will recognize that. Sorry? Like Pinot? Like Pinot? Oh, good. <laughs> That's an interesting thing as well, actually, that even on the, the package of the Wattes, it shows you um, what type of wine is a little bit in the same direction. 
And especially when you go along to, or when you go to a sommelier to explain how to use tea next to food, it's nice if you can translate it in the wine story. And that's what I'm doing daily, uh, is to explain sommeliers how, the, how you can translate the, the story of wine to the tea. Because then tea is going to be interesting. What will be served out now? If there's anyone who has an allergic for uh, cashew nuts, please don't take it. But otherwise, what you uh, will get served now is a bonbon made of foie gras. So what we've tasted before. And in that, there is some duck meat. And that's served with a uh, crust of cashew nuts uh, together with some uh, red onion chutney and a real nice Sri Lankan chutney. So there's a little chili in it and nice spices as well. And what I would like to, to ask you is take a small bite of the dish and try that along with the four different teas. So this is your database where you work with and now you're becoming a tea sommelier. And what you will experience when you try the dish next to the food is that the heat of the tea will melt down the bonbon and then all the, fl the, uh, the flavor and aroma will take off because of the heat. What's uh, quite interesting as well, because what, what my mission is in the Netherlands is to make tea a quality product. And the only way how I can do that is to serve it in wine glasses. Because when you give a wine glass to a Dutch customer, then they start smelling, looking, waltzing, and they, they will uh, be more concentrated on the flavors of what they are drinking. So if you want to make tea a special uh, product in your country, please use, to have, uh, please use some wine glasses. It's nice at a birthday party as well. At the, the birthday party of my mom, there were about 50 to 60 people and we were just serving tea in wine glasses. And we had a good time, and the fun thing is that for about 50 people, it only costed about 50, 5 euros. So we had a good day, and we saved some money to go out that night so, to drink wine. Oh, no. <laughs> Christian comes from Chile, so he's one of the, the people here who knows a lot about wine, or who has drunk a lot of wine before. I would like to ask you, what do you think when you taste the tea together with the dish? I, start, I just started, um, but I think this is the third one. Which is this one? The, the, the meta water? With meta water. Yeah, that, that's the best it's, combination? Yeah, yeah, for me. For you? Yeah, for me. And why do you I, think that's I, it? I'm not trying this one, the yata. Okay. I'll give you time to do that. What's really nice, what you experience now, that you use four teas next to one dish, is that you can easily understand that when is the, the dish overpowering the tea, or when is the tea overpowering the dish. And that's one of the reasons why I would like to show you the, just a dish with some duck meat in it and foie gras. So it's subtle, but still it has a body and character. And I think you will find the same in the tea. Oh, here we come. What do you think about the tea next to a food? No, oh, I think uh, it is a great combination, especially I like personally uh, Uda water. You like the Uda water? Uda water because it's much more darker, chocolatier and so forth. The chocolate, and, yeah? Yeah, and it's much more robust than the other one. So me personally, drinking a lot of chai, yeah. so the Uda water makes much more palatable for me. Thank you very much. You see, it's quite interesting that I've asked two people now, and one said the Meda water, one says the Uda water, and they're both white. The last one is very bitter? No, the, the third one. Third one. Maybe it can be in the brewing process, but... I think it felt, um, well, the nuts really came through strongly. The nuts really came through strongly with the second tin. Yeah. Uh, 
And with the last tea, it was much more gamey. Uh huh. Uh, more earthy. More earthy. Yeah. And that's what you get of the game. So, which one was so, your favorite? Which one was your favorite? Actually, number three was my favorite. The third one? No, the third one. The third one, the Meta, what is your favorite? Oh, sorry. As a tea by itself, uh -huh. the Ran is probably my favorite. Yeah. But I feel that the third and fourth ones actually need food to go with them. Thank you very much. And actually that was the reaction where I was hoping of, of. Because that's the interesting thing. Sometimes you have your favorite tea, but that's not the favorite tea next to your food. And you see now this range has so many, a so big spectrum for drinking tea, good quality tea, just at daytime or with small or soft dishes. So you can build up a menu with this as well. Just build up the four teas in four courses and make four courses just slightly heavier. And I think this is one of the tea what every restaurant should have if they want, don't want to say no to anyone who doesn't drink alcohol or who serves a Coke. It's always better to serve one of these and a wine sommelier will definitely understand this. So this is a good start of your own database. And actually, I've Maybe it's interesting for you all. Can we raise hands for the people who thought that the uh, run water was the best combination? You thought the run water? Uh huh. Yeah. The softness of the runwater, what you... Yeah. Good. It's good. That's good about personal flavor. So let's go on. And you as well for the runwater? And why is that? Uh-huh. Good to know. So we have three people here who think the runwater. And that, you know, that's, that's nice that you see that even with this tea, actually you're almost white because this was a delicate dish and you can use it with a delicate tea, but it has some body and text texture or structure in it as well. So that's what you're gonna need. So I would like to ask you to give a round of applause to everyone here, because you've all done the tea sommelier thing and you all passed. <laughs> Kijk, here was the matching. Mr. Fernando, what's a nice fact actually is because of the heat of the tea, aroma always goes up. So that's why you use a lid while brewing it to keep the aroma in your cup because then it condensed and the flavor and the aromas get back into your cup. When you serve uh, tea in a wine glass, you will see that the condensed sticks inside the glass. So the experience of the tea will be much better and much bigger than when you use it in a professional cup. Of course you can have a debate about it, but that's why I always serve my tea in wine glasses for the total experience. So I have a few hints and tips for you when you go back home and when you tell the story about tea and everything you've learned today. Is the first thing what I say is serve it in wine glasses so people will realize that tea is a real quality product. First, or the second thing is keep it simple. And that's the most beautiful thing about the Watte series. Keep it simple and start from there and building up your database of drinks next to food. The third one is when you speak with people of, or wine lovers about tea, always use the terms about aroma, tannins, and terroir. And you've all seen what the influence is of it. And if you tell that with passion, they cannot deny it. And the last, or the fourth thing is tannins, they bind with proteins. So try at home, even uh, just for fun, because this is fun what we're doing. Just try it at home. If you use a creamy sauce in a pasta or if you use any dish, just pick one or, one, or actually two of them and then find out what happens and share the story. And uh, the fifth one is heat melts the fat. So every time when you look a good dish next to a tea, 
find one with some fat in it. Because that makes the creamy filming experience what you like. And the last one is inspire and share knowledge. And I would like to thank you, the whole, the whole Dilma family, for the time that I, and the opportunity for me to stand here. And uh, of course, for all you that, uh, to share the story about Dilma and good quality tea. So thank you.